Hello, this is Domenico with Easynomics, and we're going to go over the concept of allocative efficiency, consumer producer surplus, and social surplus. So let's go over the definition of allocative efficiency and distinguish it from productive efficiency because these are two separate concepts. Allocative efficiency is the allocation, or another word, the distribution of resources, which are our inputs, our factors of production that include land, labor, capital, entrepreneurship, the distribution or the allocation of our inputs resulting in producing the combination and the quantity of goods and services or outputs that are desired by society. And every society is different in terms of what they value and would like. So perhaps, for example, in European nations, they really value, uh, let's say, public health services. So perhaps public health is a priority for this particular society or groups of nations. So allocative efficiency would require that resources are being allocated or distributed in order to produce enough of this public health service to meet the needs of society. And we might find there that there could be periods in time where we are providing too much, right? Perhaps too many resources are being provided and we're producing too many goods and services versus what is desired by society. And that would lead to an outcome where the marginal costs of production is greater than the marginal benefit or what's desired by society. That is what we call an over allocation. And we're going to see that in another video, um, how we interpret this or see this within a supply and demand graph. There might be other times where we're not providing enough resources to meet the needs of society. And that could lead to an outcome where the marginal benefit is greater than the marginal cost. Thus, that's the signal that we should be producing more. And that's what we call an under allocation. So we don't want either, as a comes, we don't want to either overproduce or underproduce to meet the needs of society. We want to get it just right. So we're not wasting our scarce resources. So allocative efficiency follows the rule of producing where the marginal cost equals the marginal benefit. If we achieve this, then it is allocatively efficient. So this is extremely important to remember. Allocative efficiency is achieved where marginal cost equals marginal benefit, which is essentially where supply equals demand. Since supply is our marginal cost and our demand is our marginal benefit. What is productive efficiency? This is producing at the lowest cost possible, different from the allocation of resources. Here we are producing some type of good or service, but we are doing it at the lowest cost possible, meaning that we're not wasting any resources. We're really keeping our resources, um, we're just using exactly what we need in terms of our resources and not wasting them. Uh, in any way. When we get to theory of the firm or when we develop theory of the firm more, because we have been introduced to aspects of theory of the firm, the rule for productive efficiency is when we are producing at minimum average total costs, minimum ATC or minimum average total cost, okay? That is the rule in theory of the firm, which we could still use uh, to define this term. Productive efficiency is achieved when we produce at minimum average total costs. Um, just as a quick review or reminder, since we have been introduced to an aspect of this, when we're measuring, uh, when we're looking at the production of the firm, we have price, costs, revenue. We know that the supply curve has this shape 
supply equals marginal cost, and it intersects with the average total cost curve at its lowest point. Here's our ATC. So this point right here, so I'll call point A, where supply equals ATC or where marginal cost equals ATC, that is ATC at its lowest point. So that is productively efficient. And we'll see this and discuss this a little bit more later on in the course. So let's quickly go ahead and illustrate allocative efficiency and discuss the concepts of consumer and producer surplus. Almost there. Okay. So we're going to use um, an output graph. Maybe it's the market for mobile phones or the market for iPhones. Okay. So we're going to measure quantity on the x axis and price. On the y-axis, we'll call this graph A, and we'll say that this is the market for iPhones. Just a hypothetical example. So the supply curve, we know it's upward sloping. This is Apple's supply. Supply equals their marginal cost or the additional cost of producing another unit of this good. And here we have the demand for iPhones. Demand equals to the marginal benefit. The intersection of S1 and D1 provides an equilibrium. So we're just going to make a couple notes. S1 equals D1, which provides an equilibrium quantity at Q1. And remember that at Q1 quantity supplied equals quantity demanded. So let's go ahead and illustrate that. Here is Q1, the equilibrium quantity. And it also establishes an equilibrium price at P1. Okay, there's our equilibrium price. We're also going to remember that at S1 equals D1, the marginal cost equals marginal benefit. So it is allocatively efficient here. Apple is providing the quantity of iPhones that is desired by society. So everything is perfect. Now let's take a look at what we call consumer surplus. Perhaps the average price of an iPhone, and let's just use a hypothetical number. Let's say it is $500 for a particular model. This demand curve illustrates what people are willing and able to pay. So you might have someone over here or a group of people, a quantity of people at this point, where they're willing to pay $1,000. But they actually pay $500. So they have $500 of savings, which is their consumer surplus. Perhaps we have another group of people at this point, right? a group, a quantity of people at this point that are willing to pay $750 for the phone. They actually pay 500 so they have $250 of savings. So the distance between what you're willing to pay and what you actually pay is savings to the household, or what we call consumer surplus. And let's go ahead and shade that area. Kind of the level of savings of the household when they buy goods and services in a competitive market. So this shaded area here is what we call consumer surplus. How about Apple as the firm, the producer? These are their costs of production. So perhaps um, this quantity of iPhones, perhaps that costs Apple 
$250 to produce this quantity of iPhones. But they sell it for $500, so they have $250 of profit, which is their producer surplus. Perhaps they increase production and they're producing at this point, this quantity of iPhones at a particular price. All right, this quantity, maybe we're going from QA to QB. Perhaps here it costs them $400 per unit, but they're selling it for $500, so they have $100 of profit. So the distance between what the firm receives, they receive $500 per unit, versus their cost of production is their kind of profit margin, or what we call in this case, their producer surplus. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and highlight that area to emphasize what is the producer surplus. What it costs the firm to produce versus what they receive when they sell it. What it costs the firm to produce versus what they receive when they sell it. So that area is what we call the producer surplus. The level of kind of profit that the firm generates by selling at a price above their costs. Okay. What is social surplus is one other concept that you might hear about, and that is social surplus. This is the surplus to society as a whole, and is the sum is equal to the consumer surplus plus the producer surplus. So the sum of the consumer surplus triangle plus the producer surplus triangle, all of this is the social surplus. So hopefully that makes sense um, by this point. Again, at point A, where supply equals demand, right at this point, we see that the marginal cost is equal to the marginal benefit. We're not producing more or less than what's desired by society. So in the next series of videos in regards to allocative efficiency, we're going to look at when we have over allocation or under allocation in the context of an input graph or an output graph. So that's next. And uh, that's it. Hopefully uh, this is becoming clear. If you have any questions or comments, feel free uh, to comment in the box below. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much.